Hi guys, Redneck Reloader here. Uh, I am going to talk today about dies. I got a new set, new for me. Uh, they're older dies, but I was going through them. It dawned on me that there's a lot of different styles of dies. I have several different ones here. Mostly I'm talking about pistol, just because that's what I load the most of. Um, I load a lot of rifle, but I've only really got two calibers that I load. Pistols, I have a lot more calibers I load, so I have a lot more variety of dies. And I've bought a lot of used dies. I find them to be good deals. They basically last forever if you take good care of them. Um, I have a set here that's several years older than I am, and I'm pretty damn old. They work fine. So uh, I do get some good deals on some used dies sometimes, but there's some things you need to know about them and they're kind of, some of them are set up differently and stuff. And so I just want to talk to you a little bit about that today. If you're not kind of new to reloading, you're not sure what kind of dies to buy and stuff, uh, or you buy, get into buying some older dies, this might kind of give you some ideas of what to expect, uh, what to see from them. So first thing I'll do is I'll just talk about these Lyman dies because I just bought these and uh, I'm going to bring you in a little closer and show you. So these are Lyman All-American dies and these are 38 special uh, dies. This was a really nice set. It's the original case. comes with the um, actual shell holder. Um, it doesn't matter with shell holders. Any brand will work, but this is actually the official like Lyman shell holder that's made for this die set. So uh, it was kind of nice it was included. Um, light, light wear on these. They're pretty good shape still. Uh, I'm missing a decapping pin. I was wanting to reload with these today and I've ordered some decapping pins. I just don't have them in yet. Um, Lyman pins are different than RCBS pins and I have a bunch of RCBS pins but they won't fit. So um, this is a three die set. Most pistol die sets are three die sets. And I guess I'll review quickly what the dies actually do. So there's there's several functions of the die. So the first thing it does is it resizes the case. So you know you fire the case expands, it brings it back into size into spec. It decaps it or removes the primer. And then another step is to bell the case mount, which is just expanding the case mount to accept a new bullet in it. And then it uh, another step is to um, crimp or close that bell back. And then the last, um, and also to seat the bullet. Usually those are done kind of together. You seat the bullet and then you close the crimp. Um, and that's the main uh, functions of a die set. And they're all pretty much do the same thing, but some of them do it a little differently. And that's what I'm going to talk about. So the Lyman uh, set I've got here, this is a little bit... The newer style set, I think these are probably from the 80s, maybe 90s. I don't have a date on them. Uh, but they are a uh, carbide die set. And you can see that pretty well in this Lyman die down at the base of it. You can see a circle there. That is carbide in there. Carbide is very hard and very brittle. So with a carbide die set, you do not have to lubricate your rounds. Um, you can... Um, just put them in there dry and resize them and decap them. And with an older die set, which is all steel, you have to lubricate your cases. That's really the only difference. Um, and when you set them up, you don't want to bottom this die out against your shell holder because although that carbide is very hard, it's also very brittle. So that too much force up against it, you can break it and ruin the die. So this particular setup with Lyman, what they say is to screw the die Raise your ram all the way up with your shell holder in it. Screw the die down till it touches and you back it off the thickness of a match book cover, which a lot of you are younger. You may not even know what a match book is, but um, a little piece of cardboard uh, just to back it off a little bit. I'm just going to turn it down and then just turn it back maybe half a turn just so it's not contacting it. Uh, this three die set, uh, this is very similar to RCBS dies, which I'll show you some later. The first die resizes and decaps or deprimes the case. The second die bells the case, case mouth or expands the case mouth. And the final die seats the bullet and crimps. And that's kind of your normal three die set. 
these dies are like RCBS where the decapping pin can be removed from, I'm sorry, they're different than RCBS. They're similar to some other ones where you, the decapping pin is removed from the top. So you can unscrew this, this little nut here and rod, you adjust the, the depth of the decapping pin, but you can remove the whole assembly by unscrewing this and pulling it out. And this is your decapping rod that goes down inside the case. And normally you'd have a pin sticking out right here. Um, in this case, you unscrew this, the pin sets in, and this uses a headed pin, which I'll show you the difference later on. Um, but it's a smaller pin than the RCBS one, so I can't fit an RCBS pin in here. So I've had to order the Lyman specific pins, and I don't have them yet. So, uh, but I cleaned these dies up real good. They were a little dirty. There's no rust on them. They really look good. Um, they had a lot of gunk in it. Um, it looked to me like there may be whoever was using it was using Lee liquid a locks to coat their bullets, which to me goes on sort of like honey and then it kind of hardens up, but it's always a little sticky and attracts a lot of dust. So I had to clean these pretty good with brake cleaner and stuff, but they cleaned up nicely and I think they're going to be a good set of dies. I'm looking forward to using them. And of course, like I said, the second die is your expander die which once again you set the amount of expansion by this you can remove this from the top and that's your expander it goes down inside the case mouth and expands it and bells it you can kind of see that angled to it the way it looks there you go and that just inserts into the case and bells it out that's the only thing this die does and then the last die is your bullet seating and crimp die once again you can remove it from the top the body of the die performs the crimp function and squeezes in the case um, this is a plunger that sits over top of your bullet i am not hitting the camera today it sits over top of your your bullet and seats it into the case and it's rounded off for you know kind of rounded bullets some dice that you buy, they'll have multiple ones, different uh, profiles for flat nose bullets versus round nose, the hollow points. Um, this doesn't. This is just a, the one standard unit. That's a pretty standard die set. Um, RCBS is very similar. Lee is similar. It's a little different. I'm going to show you a Lee set. Um, but first, I'm going to talk about RCBS a little bit because that's what I have the most of. Now, this is a RCBS set of nine millimeter Luger dies. I bought this set brand new. It has the same three die setup as the Lyman. There's a few things different. With these, the decapping pin, you can't screw it out of the top. It screws out of the bottom of the die. So you remove that nut and then you can unscrew it. And I want to remove it because I want to show you the decapping pin. So this die decaps and resizes the brass. This is the decapping pin on these. And this is the newer style. When you unscrew this, this end is just solid. The decapping pin itself is what they call a headed pin. So it kind of looks like a nail, has a head on it. And it drops in here. This screws down up against the head, holds it in place. And that's how you replace a decapping pin on these. And then to reinsert it, you put it in from the bottom of the die and you screw it in up to the desired level. Then you replace the nut, set it to the right length. So that's a, a newer set of RCBS dies. They're a couple years old. This is the expander die to bell the case mouth. This one does screw out of the top, similar to the Lyman. You can see the uh, expander there. And then lastly is a seating and crimp die. Once again, you can screw that from the top, similar to Lyman. And this set did come with an extra seater with a different profile for different style of bullets. So you can um, use the appropriate one for whatever bullet you're using. Setup with this is, is the same as the lineman. The first die 
decaps and resizes the case. The second die expands the case mount. Third die crimps and seats the bullet. Now, this is also a set of RCBS dies. This is a little bit older set. Not real old. <coughs> Excuse me. It's not really old because it's 40 Smith & Wesson. And, you know, that just came around in the 90s. Uh, so it's not ancient, but it's a little older. Uh, it is an RCBS die set. I've changed the lock rings on it. It's not the standard RCBS just because I bought this set used and it didn't come with any lock rings. And I just took some rings off of some old dies that I had because they're all the same. But uh, that's why they look a little different. But one thing about this, it does use what uh, you call like the older style decapper. So I'm going to remove that and show you what that looks like. Once again, RCBS, you have to screw it out of the bottom. And that's the decapper for that. You can unscrew that. And if you look at this closely, it's split at the end there. It's cut with a split in it. Hoping that shows on camera. And it's got a hole on the end. This uses a straight decapping pin. So the pin just goes in the end like that. And then this collar screws down over it. You tighten it down and that squeezes on that pin and holds it in place. I'm not the biggest fan of these. Um, they work okay once you get them set up. But what I have found is they got to be really tight. That collar's got to be tight or that pin is not going to stay in place. And you'll be cruising along decapping and all of a sudden your pin's gone and it's fallen out and it's down there mixed in with your old uh, uh, primers that you've just decapped and you got to take it apart and put it back on and try to tighten it down more. Once I get one in there and I get it in place and get it tight, I hate to have to mess around with it so um, i usually have to use pliers to tighten them down tight enough and so i like to cat the headed pins better now one thing about these i will say i have put headed pins in these before i've broken pins and not had a straight one you can unscrew this put a headed pin in there and tighten it down and it will work uh, so i've kind of got to where i'm going to start just replacing all of my can with just headed pins so I don't have to fool with these as much. Um, and you can also replace this rod. I have, uh, I've bent rods and RCBS has replaced them under warranty. I've also bought a few rods, so I have extras and they're replaceable. Uh, as I haven't actually done this, but I'm pretty sure I could probably take the rod out of my nine millimeter and put it in here. Cause with RCBS, they're kind of the same. Uh, a lot of the decapping rods are kind of the same. Uh, so I think it would be possible just to, if you wanted to upgrade your dies, is just replace that capping, decapping rod with a new headed pin style. But you can see the RCBS dies are all pretty straightforward. They're all pretty much the same. Uh, even the rifle sets are very similar. Uh, they are just two die sets instead of three die sets. That's the big difference with them. They just kind of combine some steps together, and you don't bell the case mouth with those, so that's a step that they don't need. I'm going to talk about Lee dies now a little bit. Before I pull out a set, I'm going to show you this. This is a just a 40 Smith & Wesson decapping die from Lee, and you can see it's pretty beat up. I bought this off of eBay for like five bucks. Uh, it was just a single die. It wasn't a set. I bought this for a specific reason. I have the Lee app, um, which is the automatic processing press, and it's kind of an auto feed press. I've done a video on it here, a couple of them. But you can just feed empty cases in it, and then you just sit there and pull the lever, and it's almost like a progressive style press where it's very good for decapping and resizing. So I use it a lot for decapping and resizing. And I've pretty much got where I just buy Lee dies for that. So I'm going to get another one, nine millimeter. I bought this one specifically for that because what I found is when you're doing that automated stuff, if you get a, if a case comes in there a little crooked or there's a piece of media or something in there, it's really easy to snap a pin. And I was snapping a lot of pins 
on my RCBS dies. And there's the 40 cal dies are straight pins. I'd have to mess with those and try to get them back in there and get them tight. And I was getting sick of it. And so I bought this for that. And Lee, I'm going to show you their whole die set here in a minute. But just for this 40 cal die, I'll just show you just their decapping. Where they do it a little different is a decapping rod. So it unscrews here from the top. You've got this collar on the top. You unscrew it. And you pull the rod out. And the rod is just one solid piece. It's not like this little tip comes out. This whole rod is solid. And it's just straight. There's no threads on it or anything. And this little collar is slotted. And so the way this one works is... And this is a carbide die, by the way. You drop that in. You tighten that collar down. And you just push that pin and flush. And then while you're going along decapping... If you hit an obstruction in the bottom of the case, the idea is the pin will just push up like that and not break the pin. It saves you from breaking the pin. And then all you've got to do is push this back down, tighten the collar down again, or tighten it down a little tighter, and then you move on. I have never broken one of these. Now, I've heard of people breaking Lee pins before, uh, and they do sell hardened pins. There's a guy I used to see advertised on the internet all the time I believe it was his name is squirrel daddy or something like that but he sells some hardened steel like aftermarket pins for the lead dies and obviously if there's a market for that then there must be people who are breaking these things but I have never broken one um, once again I find that collar has to be tightened pretty tight Otherwise, you're just pushing it up constantly um, with just a tough primer. Or if you hit one where the primer has been crimped in, so it's a little bit more resistance, they will pop out. That pin will pop up. But I like the Lee dies just for that. Um, Lee makes good dies. I don't have an issue with them. I've just bought more RCBS. But the Lee dies I have all work well. Um, I could recommend them pretty highly. So that's how their decapping works on theirs. Other than that, they're pretty similar. Uh, this is a set of 45 ACP Lee dies. And yes, they're in RCBS box because I bought them used. I didn't get the original box. But it's got the decapping pin. Uh, I mean the decapping die with their decapping pin, which you can see there. This is what they call the, um, this is the one that, bells a case mouth, but they call it a powder through die. It's a little bit different design. Um, it's hollow at the top. And it's got the little uh, piece in there that bells the case mouth, but it actually moves a little bit. You see it sliding back and forth in there. This is, uh, it's kind of neat. I've used these the way it's intended to be used before. Uh, it's also got a little machined section at the top. You can, if you're using like in a progressive press, the you can put an auto powder feed that fits down in there, but it's also made to fit their funnel to sit down inside there. And the idea of this is you can bell the case mouth and drop the powder in at the same time in one step. So you, you run the case up in there, it bells the case mouth, you dump your powder in, you pull it back out and it just kind of saves you a step. So that's a Lee thing. I, I haven't seen that in any other dies. There may be other dies that use that, but I think that's a Lee feature. That little piece that moves back and forth in there, that serves a purpose. Because after you push the die up in there and the case mouth is belled, and then you drop the powder from the top, when you pull it out, that little piece comes down and then it kind of pops out at the end. And when it does that, it kind of shakes the die. And that shakes any remaining powder that's in the funnel or in the inside of the die body down into the case. So it's got this little clunk, clunk, clunk to it when you're using it that's made to shake that powder down. And it works quite well. And then the final die is your uh, seating and crimp die. And it's very similar to... Uh, the other ones, you screw it in, the die body does the crimping, and the plunger sets the depth. Now, Lee is big on their four die sets. This is a three die set. The four die set includes the factory crimp die, which I have for 45 ACP. I just have it in a separate case. If I put it in a bigger case and laid it in there, this would be a four die set. 
And this one works a little different. It's got, I, I won't go into detail with how the Leaf Factory crimp die works because I've made a whole video on that, but it resizes. So it's got a carbide ring at the bottom. You screw it down till it touches and then you turn this and this is just your crimp. So if you're using this, this die, you won't use the crimp feature. You'll only use it for bullet seating and then you use a factory crimp die for the crimping. The other thing that's a little different about Lee dies is the lock ring. The RCBS and, and all the other dies that I'm familiar with. Here's a Redding die to show you. The lock ring, this one's actually locked down because I have these set. Let's see, this one's loose. The lock ring has a Allen screw or sometimes they have just a set screw you use a screwdriver with. And you set the die you lock the ring down and then you can tighten that that holds it in place and then you can unscrew the whole die which is why i have this one set up and you can just unscrew the whole die and then when you screw it back in it goes back to the same place lee does something a little different with theirs uh, it's an aluminum ring there is no set screw or anything in it it has an o-ring on the bottom of it and that o-ring provides some tension so it's a little bit more tougher to turn, but it holds it in place better. So with the Lee, they're made to just screw down. You just screw it to where you want it and set it. And it doesn't turn as easy. It won't vibrate out, uh, out of adjustment or anything. Uh, that's something, once again, unique to the Lee dies. So Lee kind of does things a little different with their dies, but I like Lee dies. Um, I have no problem reloading with them. I have a couple of sets of them and I would buy more. Um, I think sometimes they're kind of put off as a, a cheaper die. Their boxes are kind of chintzy. Um, this is a taper crimp die. This is kind of representative of, of their boxes. They're kind of a cheaper plastic. They break easily. Um, some of their dies you buy come in a round style box. So this is a sizing die kit, but this is like a, one of their round kind of boxes that comes in. The die sits in there, and they make these bigger ones for like the three and four die sets. And I'm not a big fan of these. I like the square boxes. They stack up better. But if you're putting them up on a shelf and stuff, these are fine. But they also make a budget line of dies that I have never bought, but I'm familiar with them. They're called RGB, stands for really good buy. It's the same basic die, but the box is a little cheaper and it doesn't come with, uh, I don't think it comes with directions because uh, you can download those off the internet. Um, it's just kind of a, they're a little bit cheaper and they take some of the frills out uh, of them. Uh, but it, my understanding is they're the same dies. So, all right, so, so far, all the dies we've looked at have been three die sets and the dies are all set up the same way. The first die is a resize and deprime uh, de die. Second one bells a case mount. Third die seats a bullet and crimps. But not all die sets are like that. So I got a couple other ones I wanna show you. So this is a uh, set of Redding dies in 45 ACP. This was the very first set of dies I ever bought. They're used. One thing I think is kind of cool is I do a lot of uh, small batches. I'll be reloading like 10 rounds, working up a new load and things like that. And Redding actually on their box have holes drilled to fit the cases. So you can actually, if you're working up, you know, they've got 20 holes. If you're loading a small amount, you can actually use this as a case holder while you're going through and reloading. Um, that's kind of neat. They're the only ones I've ever seen do that. So... This is a three die set. This is an older set, so it's a steel die set, so they have to be lubed. But it's a three die set, but it's set up different than the other ones. So I want to show you how that works. So this is the first die, and as you can see, it's a little dirty. I need to clean it, but it's uh, just a straight through die. There's no plunger in it. This is a sizing die. That's all this does is resizes the case. So that's the very first step is you just run the case through the resizing die. It doesn't deprime it. 
it just resizes the case. And that's die number one. And if you hear any noise outside, just forgive me. I'm having some landscaping work done outside. So the guys are working out there and they're running some machinery. The second die decaps and bells the case mouth. So uh, same steps as the other die sets, but they do them a little different. Instead of decapping and resizing in one step, it just resizes. And then you're decapping and belling the case mouth. And I'll kind of show you how that works. So you can remove the plunger from the top. And let me give this a quick wipe off here. And you can see this is bigger and tapered. So this goes inside the case, deprimes it, and then this flares the case mouth in one step. That's a little different than the other dies. And uh, this also has the older style straight decapping pin in it the slot and this is just a little different way of doing the same thing and then the final die is your crimping and seating die and it works exactly the same the the body does the crimp and then there's a cedar plug that seats a bullet and you can get these in different shapes and for bullet, different bullet o jives and stuff. But that's the Redding die set. That's the only die set I have like that. I don't know if all Redding sets are like that, but this set is a three die set, but it's just laid out different than the standard, I guess you'd say, RCBS or Lee or Lyman die sets. I do not have any Hornady die sets. I've never used those. Um, just don't have any. Um, I wish I could include one of those in this video, but I don't have any. This is a set of CH dies. This is uh, from, as near as I can figure, these were from 1962-ish. Uh, I can kind of get that from the literature that's in, that came with them. This was new old stock. These were never used dies. It's got the original paperwork in them. I did a video, I think, about these. I got these for like $13.00. Um, this was back pre-COVID. I've had these for years. Uh, great little die set. They're, it's a two die set. And these are steel dies, so they have to be uh, lubricated cases. And this is a two die set. And the way this one works is this first one deprimes, resizes, and bells the case mouth all in one step. And... I'll pull the plunger out. It comes out of the top like the RCBS or some of those do. Well, not the RCBS, the alignments. The RCBS goes out the bottom. But um, you can see it kind of looks like the Redding die set where, um, as I said, it's a sizing die. You can take this out and just run the cases through a period alone and it resizes them. But with this in, it decaps and this has a straight decapping pin in it. And then this piece goes down inside the case, and I don't have any 38 Smith out here to show you, but I'll kind of show you on a 40 Smith and Wesson, even though it's bigger. This goes down inside there and deprimes it. And that portion there builds the case mouth while you're doing it. So uh, nifty little design. Um, not a big fan of it, but I've used it. And then the final die is the seating and crimp die. And it's just like all the other ones I've shown you. The case does the crimping. The cedar plug comes out. And you can see where it just sits over the bullet tip, pushes it in. What I don't like about these is you're kind of limited as to how much you can bell the case mount. Um, it's just that little bit right there. That's what controls the belling and that's as big as you can make it. And I was having some problems loading with it because I was using lead bullets and I needed more 
belling. And they were shaving the side of the lid when I was pushing the bullets and they were getting shaved. So I just want a little bit more belling, but you're limited what you can get with this. And so what I would done is I screwed it down, screwed it down, screwed it down, screwed it down, trying to get more. And what happened is here at the bottom, you can see where the decapping pin comes through. Well, what had happened was I got down so far trying to get more belling and this portion started to hit on the inside of the case on the bottom and pushed in and it took the portion down here where your primer seats and pushed it up like that so it was kind of sticking up in here a little bit and then when i see in my primers my primers were not going in far enough. They were sticking up just a little bit. They wouldn't go down level. And then when they put them in my revolver, they wouldn't cycle through the cylinder because of, they were hitting and they were jamming up and it was causing me problems. And the cases were ruined because I couldn't get that bulge back out of them. And 38 Smith & Wesson cases are a little bit harder to come by. So that was kind of bummed. I didn't, I didn't ruin a bunch of them, but I ruined a few. So that's another, that's how a two die set works for pistols. That's the only two die set I have for pistols. And like I said, I'm not a big fan of it. I don't load 38 Smith and Wesson a lot. I've thought about getting a Lee, um, they make a generic uh, crimp die with a couple different things. I mean, not crimp die, I'm sorry. A uh, generic flaring die that has a couple of different jigs that you can put in there that flare a different amount. And so you can use those. They don't do any sizing or anything in the case. All they do is flare the case mount, kind of a universal thing. And if I loaded a lot of 38 Smith, I'd either get a new set of dies or if I use those, I would get one of those so I could build the case mount a little bit more to kind of suit my needs. So, so that just kind of gives you an idea of some of the different styles of dies and how to set them up a little bit and how they accomplish the same thing different ways. So... I'll close this video out. It's just some little information I wanted to share. I hope you find it helpful. And uh, be back again soon. I'm going to try to maybe do some reloading this afternoon. If these guys get this work done. And make a video on that. But I'll see you again soon. God bless.